Hey folks, Dr. Mike Israel here for Renaissance Periodization, Strength Training Made Simple video number 14, Preventing and Managing Injuries. Uh, preventing, good, managing, stinks, but you gotta do it sometimes because injuries will happen despite your best efforts. But what do we mean by best efforts? How do you stay safer than you could otherwise be when pursuing strength training? We have four good tips for you. First, don't be an idiot. Now don't worry, we're not just lambasting you for something. We have specific ways to not be an idiot. First, warm up. Do not rush warm ups. Do not rush warm ups. Do not rush warm ups under any circumstance. That is 90 something percent of why people get hurt, as far as my own personal experience. People rush warm ups. Don't do it. If you're training for hypertrophy, it's a 20 to 30. Your first set as a warm up, it's fine. It's a power lifter, weight lifter, strongman, rushing warm ups. Just type into Google, I rush my warm up, and you get all kinds of stories. Don't do it. Take your time. If there's not enough time for you in the session to get a good warm up and train, you got to reschedule that session. It's as simple as I'm going to keep it. Also, keep your technique clean. Never sacrifice good technique. You do it once, nothing happens. You feel emboldened. You do it twice, nothing happens. You feel great. You do it fourth, fifth, sixth time, time number seven, some of your shit snaps up, and then you're like, God damn it, why the hell did I do that? Don't be in that 2020 hindsight position. Just keep your technique super clean, which means keep it similar week to week to week. Stable technique is a safe technique. Don't do crazy, let's try it shit with higher loads. For example, let's say you've been squatting with a pretty close stance for weeks and weeks and months and months. You've warmed up to a super heavy load and you've done one working set, let's say, and your friend's like, hey, you ever tried like a wide stance squat? You're like, oh, let me try that. Do not try it. Don't do it. With the same way that you've been used to narrow stance, don't ever remotely think about it. Here's how you would do it. Finish your close stance squatting, take a ton of weight off the bar, go down to like half of what you normally squat, and try a wide stance squat. And if it feels good, next week, do the same thing, heavy work still on your normal close stance squats, and then 10 or 15 or 20 pounds more on that wide stance squat afterwards. And then after a few weeks, your wide stance squat's gonna start to come up pretty high, and then the next mesocycle, you can switch to just wide stance squatting as a fresh exercise. Do not just get into new technique under heavy loads. Great way to get hurt, because your tissues are not specifically adapted to the force vectors of that exact lift. And if it's a very different technique, they're very different. You may have the muscle strength to lift the weight, but not the connective tissue integrity to support the weight during various phases. And then chances of snap city absolutely increase. Another big one on this note of don't be an idiot, keeping technique clean, especially with the heaviest loads. There's tons of people like, yeah, my technique's good until I get beyond 90% or the last rep is always bad. It should be the other way around. Chad Wesley Smith of Juggernaut Training, he just, great YouTube channel, by the way, Juggernaut Training Systems, has tons and tons of ideas about how your technique, if you're a really good lifter, needs to improve the heavier you go because you're relying on that technique to be safer at heavier loads and to be more productive as far as maximal uh, force is concerned. So your technique, when somebody watches you do a max deadlift and that you put the bar down, you turn to them and you're like, eh, what do you think? They're like, yeah, technique's kind of stinky. And you're like, yeah, but it was a max. No, 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 no. That is a route to Snap City. You're a real good lifter, like up here as well as here, you're gonna make sure that every lift looks amazing. Look to the Russians, I know a self-serving statement, Eastern European lifters, their warm-ups look exactly like their 1RMs. That is the model you wanna practice, not like once the weight gets heavy, bucket, no, whatever. That's a good way to get hurt. Number two, general concept. You wanna ramp up your volumes and loads slowly. You never wanna add more than a set per session uh, per week if you're adding sets. If you started with three sets of bench next week, don't do six sets of bench. Do maybe four if you have to, and oftentimes you just increase load. The load addition should not increase by more than one RPE point. A load that takes you from an RPE seven to an RPE eight next week is totally fine. Even if it's just seven to seven and you still added load, that's amazing. You do not wanna do an RP7 load one week, and the next week slap 45s on the bar and do an RP10. Great way to get hurt. So loads should be slowly incremented, not radically altered week to week to week. And on the soreness front, don't train with overlapping soreness often. In hypertrophy training, it's bad mechanistically to train with overlapping soreness because the damage literally interferes with growth, but like you're probably not gonna get hurt because you know, who gets hurt doing sets of 20 or, or 15 or whatever. As a strength trainee, sets of three to six, Soreness is literal microfiber damage, okay? You're, you're taking a rubber band and kind of like breaking it at the edges a bit and then saying, let's really apply a ton of force. 
don't do that. If you're still sore, like really sore, take a technique session. Come back next time, reduce the volume a little bit, then you won't be sore, and then you can build up to really good consistent frequency of overload versus training sore all the time and getting yourself into some trouble. Point number three, pay attention. If a technique hurts you and that pain is increasing with every rep and with every set and every week, change something. Because if you just, it just oh yeah, deadlifts hurt my back, but whatever, six months later, you're like, oh, it turns out I have permanent damage in my back. Like that sucks. I didn't know how it happened. Well, if you're paying attention, we're not telling you to be a wuss. But lifting shouldn't hurt your joints over and over and over and get worse and worse and worse. Yeah, every now and again, things will feel weird. You're like, ah, whatever, you do another warm-up, you feel fine. That's totally cool. But if things are getting progressively worse, try to change your grip, angle, something, take a deload, something has to give because if you consistently have joint and connective tissue pain that gets worse, you're literally asking for injury. You're begging for the shit at that point. Number four, I know it's tough. Deload like you're supposed to. Take after active rest like you're supposed to. Take recovery sessions like you're supposed to. A lot of people want to skip the deload. A lot of people want to cut the deload short. You start feeling pretty good about 60% of the way through your deload. You start feeling damn good. So like Thursday, Friday, you're like, fuck it. Let's start training again. Your muscles feel great. Your systemic fatigue is now low. But remember, connective tissues take longer to heal than everything else. Which means, and by the way, they're very poorly innervated. Your tendons have very few nerves in them. So you can't even tell if they're frayed. Your tendon being a fucking string. You have no idea about it because your muscles healed, you feel fine. And systemically, you feel great. Get in there and boom, some shit snaps. It's unlikely, but it's possible. Nice, long, full-length deloads and active rest phases. Don't add work during your deload because you're feeling itchy. You're like, oh, do some more reps, get a pump. Don't do that. Deloads are for easy. As a mature person, as a mature lifter, easy is good because it gives you that ability to heal everything, have another productive cycle. So don't rush it, don't cut it short because you need to heal, that'll keep you much safer from injury. Now, shit doesn't always happen that way. And I'll tell you this right now, big statement on life in general, all of the training process, no matter how perfect you are, you will still get hurt on, uh, on occasion. It just happens. You're training hard and heavy, shit absolutely happens. When it happens, you can be prepared to do the right thing. So first of all, for all the other stuff that didn't get hurt, let's say you hurt your quad. When you're saying, okay, can I still train bench and can I still train some posterior chain? The answer to that is yes, if the benching and posterior chain or whatever else you wanna train isn't hurting the injured area at all or hardly at all. If it's like, yeah, I tried to deadlift, but my quad really hurts, stop deadlifting. Let your quad heal and then you can get back to it later. But for that injured area specifically, just kind of like a seven step process, of getting back to 100% normal training. I know it's seven steps, it sucks, but you can either do this and pretty nearly guarantee that you're back to 100% or close, or you can not do this and skip a bunch of steps and rush through it and just keep getting hurt and hurt and hurt and hurt. Which one you want, it depends on how impatient you are and how short-sighted you are. You're probably neither of those things, so you're gonna do this right. So here's the deal. Number one, when you get hurt, if it's a bad injury, see a medical professional and do all the surgery, rehab, time away, any combination that they instruct so that you're cleared to go back to physical activity by them having done everything right. So people get out of surgery and they're like, yep, yeah, I go do rehab. And you're like, yeah, fuck that. I'm going to do my own rehab. And then they're maxing the bench a week later. Stupid idea. Don't do that. So when you're cleared for activity by your rehab person or the surgeon or whoever, or just the regular med docs that take two weeks off and you get back into it, you wanna start with sets of 20 to 30 reps at five to 10 reps in reserve, that is a very easy set, and just work on range of motion. Once you have a pain-free range of motion with those lighter sets, you can work up to hard sets of 20 to 30. So zero to three reps in reserve. Okay, very, very, pushing it very, very hard. Once you feel good and there's no pain and everything feels fine training hard, you can start to add in a few sets to cycle for minimum effective volume to maximum recoverable, really start building some muscle in the 20 to 30 rep range. You know, the forces are really low and that's on purpose. Okay, the weights are really light so that the forces are low so that we don't expose the connective tissues to high forces because they're still healing while we build muscle, which is really, really cool. Number four, okay, so we've done, we've added some sets, so we're training pretty hard. Over time, with number five, we're gonna slowly add some load in until we're lifting in the 10 to 20 rep range, okay? You do not just one week do sets of 30 and the next week do sets of 10. You just add five or 10 pounds here and there to slowly lower it while raising the forces. Awesome, and if you survive that, no big deal, then you're ready to continue adding load, if, if everything is good with sets of 10 and 12, then you start dipping into the five to 10 range. There's deloads in between this potentially, it might be a long process, we'll get to that in a sec. Once you're feeling really great in the five to 10 range for at least some amount of time, 
then you can start dipping in to sets of three to six. And once the three to sixes feel good, you're good. Because if you can lift heavy with sets of three to six, by the way, you put on a ton of muscle during this time, then you're good to go. And there's clearly the injury is not a concern anymore, right? Now, how long does this take? This can take, if it's a teeny tiny little, tiny little pull, this whole process can take a week. Okay, like Monday, you do one and two. Wednesday, you do three and four. And then Friday, you do five and six. And then next week, you do seven, which is sets of three to six, and you feel great. That absolutely can happen. That's a little ding. It's not really an injury. If it's a full quad evulsion, okay, you just tore your quad out from under you during the actual competition, this whole thing can take months. It can take a year and a half. Because there's checklists here, like once you are doing this and successfully doing it without pain or weirdness, then you move on. It's an auto-regulated process. So when should you stop doing sets of 20 to 30 or 5 to 10 RIR and start to do sets of 20 to 30 at 3 RIR? When do you move from step 2 to step 3? The answer is when you are pain-free with through that range of motion. That's it. That's your answer. And it may happen after one session, and it may happen after six months. You're not in charge of that. Your body's in charge of that. Listen to your body well. Do what's right. Be patient. You will have built some muscle after this and eventually be stronger than when you got hurt with damn near no memory of the injury at all. That's the ideal. Do your best. See you next time.